So I have here a product model and a plan model. And my goal is to create a Django command so that I will be able to create products and plans from command line. And to do this, here in management commands, I created a file do.py where is the very basic skeleton of a Django command. To add additional arguments to this Django command, I need to define a function called add argument. And now I can add additional arguments like this. And my intent is not actually to just create products and plans. I want to create, list, update and delete them. So my first attempt to design command line interface will be something like this. And now if I try to run my do command, and now if I'll check help of my do command, it tells me about four positional arguments, create, list, update, delete. The thing is that just by adding commands this way I did here, I create so-called positional arguments. Positional arguments are first of all mandatory and they have a, well, position. So Django expects me now to run do command like this. Obviously for my intent this doesn't make any sense. I will always specify one of these four operations. So this means that in reality we need only one positional argument which is by default mandatory. The correct approach will be to have only one positional argument and a better name for it will be operation. Notice that this get function will always return something because operation is a positional argument and as I mentioned earlier the position arguments are always mandatory. So this argument will always be there so to speak. Operation can have value list as well. This command class provides a very neat way to write messages to console. This has the advantage that we can style the output. So in case we reach this place and everything was fine, if op was create list update or delete, I will write styled success message. So now I can run my basic do command like this. Great and for the list, notice that operation at this moment can accept anything. So I can do something like xyz and it will be accepted as argument. Let's fix this small issue. Add argument function allows you to restrict the values this argument can have. And you do this with choices key. Choices, as you might guess, will be a list of values this argument can have. Instead of referencing strings like this ones here in many parts of the code like I do here, it is always better to use constants. The problem is that with strings we can very easily do a typo and introduce very subtle bugs to our code. I will define here at the top of this module four constants and replace this parts in the code. And now in command line if I will add a different value for operation argument, command will complain with invalid choice. And in help of this command you can see the positional arguments is allowed only to have these four values. Parser object here and its add argument function are parts of standard Python module called arg parse. In pro version of this lesson, I will explore in detail this module. Arg parse is a very powerful module and it enables you to design Python application with a beautiful command line interface. Pro lessons are available only on djangolessons.com. They all are free until June 2020. You will need only to sign up to access them. Following the same logic I used for operation, I will add yet another mandatory argument called model. Model argument is a positional argument which means it is mandatory and it has two choices, plan and product. Also behind the scene I added code which passes this module to create and list functions. So by now our command has two mandatory arguments, operation and a model. And if I want to create a product, great. Another group of arguments are so-called 
optional arguments. Optional arguments are, well, optional. You might specify them or you might not. You create optional arguments by specifying double dashes in front of the argument name, like I do here. You can also specify a shorter version of optional argument. You specify a shorter version like this, that is with one single dash. So now in command line, I can still create a product without specifying its title and its description. And command won't complain. And optionally, I can add a title and a description. And I can use a shorter version of optional arguments as well, like this. So now I'll add code to handle these two new options, title and description, and also I'll create and list models. Title and descriptions, they are designated for create function. So I'll add these two new arguments here. And in case model is product, otherwise, if model is a plan, Now let me import these two models. It shows me an error because description, description. Okay, great. And the similar logic applies in list function. And now let me check if code I wrote so far works. First, I'll try to create a product with title one and long description one. Great. And now let me check if product was indeed created. Great, it works. And in similar fashion, it works for plans. As you can see, this part of code and this one has a lot of repetition. And repetitive code is always bad and you should avoid it at all costs. A neat way to refactor this part of code is using Django's apps. Let me show you what I mean. Here at the top I will import Django apps. And Django's apps object has a nice method called getModel, which allows you to get a reference to model class from its string name, like this. Notice here that I need to specify my app name. In my case, my Django project app name is called land. So app label will be land. And second argument is a model name. And also note that model name can be uppercase, lowercase, it just doesn't matter. So instead of using same code here and here, I'll write it like this. And similar thing I can do in list method. So first I'll get a reference to models class, again via getModel function, and this will allow me to remove duplicate code from this part as well. And if I will list plans now or products, it works. And code looks much better as well. And we can design it even better by moving this part into yet another function. Let me do that quickly. So now I can use my internal getModel method. Let me move this function here. Much better now. And before I conclude this lesson, I will tell you one more thing. Both title and description arguments are optional. And because of their optional nature, it is always good to provide a default value. And you do that with default key, like this. Same thing for description. And now if I'll create a product without specifying its title and description like this, it will create me a product with default title and description. Default title and default description. And now I can create a product and provide only its title. Notice that for second product, the title was the one that I provided here as an argument and description was default one. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.